Hey there, welcome to the Eurostep Milwaukee Bucks podcast, proudly a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network and GSPN, plus presented by Prize Picks. I'm Ty Windish, one of your hosts, joined as always by my elegant co host, Rohan Kadi. Rohan, happy Sunday. Happy Bucks are not getting swept on their road trip day. How's it going, sir? Doing, doing all right, all right. Uh, matinee Bucks game, no Kawhi Leonard, no Paul George. They still managed to get a victory with uh, Norm Powell, Amir Coffey, James Harden going off, Zubats going off. It's just a, it was a, it was a weird game, weird game for the Clippers. They played two games in the span of nineteen hours of each other, or something like that. Yeah, it's daylight savings. Everything's messed up. I still have to fix fix my oven clock and my microwave clock. I did my it's, oven it, and microwave, but I forgot to do the car. So my schedule for the day when I got home from running for some errands was like all tilted. I thought I had another hour until the game. I missed half of the first quarter. Daylight savings wreaking havoc on the Eurostep. Yes, it just it, it wreaks havoc on everyone. Are you an abolish hey, daylight savings time guy? I'm a keep the daylight savings time. So it's like what the time is now should be permanent. Which this one is it gets dark later. Yes. What about farmers? I, I've been told. What, what about them? <laughs> yeah. That, that, well, that's always what I heard is like, oh, it's about farmers. And I was like, then someone pointed out like farmers don't clock in. They, they just have to farm. Like it's not if you're tending crops, like if it's sunny, you just have to go do and it. It's not like it's it's not like the plants care if it's four or five o'clock. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I so think look, uh, look, I'm with that. Yeah. Just, Although just I will say make it. When it's dark at like 4 p.m. in December, that is depressing. Yeah, which is why having daylight savings time permanent is a good thing. Oh, yeah, it's better for that. It, it's just darker yeah. longer in the morning, right? Yeah. That's not as bad. Yes. I agree. I agree. No. So, but yeah, basketball, actually. Yeah, we'll talk to you uh, next time. We covered what we needed yeah. to cover. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Bucks get this win over the Clippers. It's been a it's been a rocky road trip so far, going zero and two to start against the Warriors, against the Lakers, and probably the worst game of the season, in my opinion, just from the pure outcome of it all. I wouldn't say that. outcome. No, Ty getting blocked by Spencer Dinwiddie in crunch time is the worst thing that can ever happen. What about the Grizzlies game? That's just a blowout. I don't even care. You think that's not I don't as even care. You think that's not as bad? I don't think that's as bad. It's the game before oh. the All-Star break. Who cares? Getting blocked by Spencer Dinwiddie. I told you this. Getting blocked by Spencer yeah, Dinwiddie in crunch time is worse gut. than a shotgun to the chest. Yeah. It it, like it's that. it's horrible. It, I thought it's, it was it's, Cam Reddish the vibes in real time. Then I saw it was Dinwiddie, and I was like, oh, that sucks. It's bad. It's bad, but uh, yeah, it's been a tough road trip to start. When we when we came to you guys uh, last time, we were uh, gonna we were previewing this road trip, and we were thinking, hey, you know, three and one on the road trip, that's really good. Four and zero, incredible. They're now one and two. Uh, yeah. They have one game remaining against the Sacramento Kings on Tuesday, and uh, it's been a mixed bag. It's been a mixed bag for the Bucks. We've seen a lot of different. Players go off. We've seen good things. We've seen bad things. So, uh, where do you want to start? Let's start. Let's start with the bad, and then we'll circle around to the good. And this is me selfishly thinking, what's going to make the rest of our Sundays better? And I think that's ending with the good, and then carrying that energy over to our Sundays. Rohan and I, uh, they've just looked old again. And slow, I feel like, has been one of the takeaways. I mean, against teams that really are not spring chickens either. Like, they've just been, like, I think especially defensively. And uh, when they turn the ball over, they're letting teams run way too effectively again lately, I feel like. But uh, on defense, like, when they're – some of the traps with Bobby, like, they just get picked apart on the back end. They're leaving too many shooters open. It feels like they're not rotating quickly enough or crisply enough. And it's been disheartening because it felt like they were on a string and they were overcoming their slowness by being physical on their six-game winning streak. And these these three games on this road trip, I'd say this one probably least so, but still a little bit, it just feels like they have not been crisp enough. And I really don't know what to attribute that to. Like, obviously the Warriors move a bunch and, you know, they're a very motion-heavy team. This is not, though, like a insanely quick roster. I mean, they have some athletes. Kaminga gave them trouble, whatever. But, like, 
Gary Payton too. Domingo is Wiggins. Wide open. Odds, but even even Wiggins, Wiggins isn't lightning speed. Yeah, but the thing is, he's just he's he's yeah, that's fair. Are you sure you can't if you're losing the if you can't keep up with the Wiggins's of the world, you're DOA. Like every team has eight guys as fast as Andrew Wiggins. Do the Bucks? He's, no, well, every team except the Bucks. That's the issue. But like <laughs> Gary Payton slips open a bunch in his four for four. Although I will say it, the 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 actual losing of that Warriors game is probably their most, like, okay loss of the season, given we all knew going in because the Warriors got absolutely stomped by Boston. They were going to play very hard at home, and they just they need every game now. They're in playing and everything. So the fact that they lost that game is not what frustrates me. It's the way they lost it. I mean, I think they could have played a pretty good game and still lost the way the Warriors shot in that game. But it was tough to see them get close in the third and then just get curb stopped again by Golden State from there. But it just felt like their pick and roll defense has not been good enough on these three games. I don't know if it's like the scouting report on what they first were doing got out, or they're just not executing. But it's been problematic. It it really has. A lot of guys are getting out of position a ton. We're seeing Dame and Brooke miscommunicate on uh, a lot of just basic pick and roll coverages, which was part of their undoing in that Lakers loss where you get that clutch D'Angelo Russell bucket because they just didn't know what they were going to be doing. And if you're defending a pick and roll with Damian Lillard and Brooke Lopez, excuse me, that's a very common occurrence. That's not something that's completely out of the blue. It's a one-five pick and roll defense. Like, well, it, it's, it's I, not I think so- the, the problem was they guarded it the way they guarded the first 46 minutes of the game, not what they should have done in that situation. Yes, but just confusion in general over yeah. something that where they should be able to have whatever machination of it because they do it so frequently. But, yeah, well, just in that and, Warriors game. Sp- and Brooke shouldn't have been out there. And I think we did see that change to close the Clippers game. Pat Bev checked in for Brooke Lopez in the closing defensive possessions, which, again, if you, have, if you go small and just switch, then you eliminate that confusion. So it felt like at least that was a lesson they learned from. But, yeah, giving D'Angelo Russell, who just simply could not miss, uh, was that on Friday night? An open floater in that situation was just just can't happen. Shot 17 of 25 from the field, 9 for 12 from three. 44 points. Just ridiculous. A Lakers team without LeBron James also, with Anthony Davis getting hurt and not being shoulder. able to use one of his arms yeah. in, the, in the fourth quarter there. And it's just... It's just disappointing. But I think this gets to one thing I wanted to talk about and is a little concerning over this road trip is Brooke Lopez. Uh, just guards are tearing him apart. They truly are. The Bucs, they, they're scrambling, trying to figure out what they need to do with Brooke on a given and every given possession based on who is out there guarding, uh, who they're trying to guard out there because different guards and different players and different players types can just fillet him in different ways it, it's it's dealing with quickness it's dealing with pull-up shooting and just the the bucks haven't really figured it out yet uh i mean it's not like this is something we talked about in the adrian griffin era as well where it's not entirely brooke lopez's fault because the point of attack defenders aren't really there he's being misused he was being misused a bunch in in different schemes but even now, they're still trying to figure that part out. And this is, just speaks more to a personnel issue than a than a coaching or strategy issue. Is just that the Bucs don't have the roster around Brooke Lopez to really have Brooke Lopez be a featured defender. I don't know if I agree. I, I think the issue, to me, looks like sometimes Brooke reverts to the muscle memory of what he's been doing for the last five years. That's what it looks like to me on some of these possessions where... Like he drops a step too far when they need him to trap or, you know, he comes over too early when they probably just need him to stick with his guy and there's not going to be help around because they're more stretched out. He still, I think, is giving you value around the rim. A crazy thing was, and I know I'm not making a thing based on single game plus minus, but the Bucks being plus 13 in Brooks minutes in the Lakers game is honestly just like beyond wild. And the the be- I'm sure we'll get to the bench and Pat Bev and that, that was a huge issue. Uh, in the first two games and, and a little bit against the Clippers as well. But I, I, it just feels like they're not in sync to me more than it feels like Brooke can't do it. Like, I, I, and I think I do think some of it is just it, it, it oftentimes I've noticed in the Doc era, especially in this last losing streak, 
a lot of the times it looks to me like Brooke is the one who's not in the right position. Like he's in the right position that, you know, if Mike Budenholzer was the coach, he'd probably be in the right position, what he's doing. But based on what they're executing, it feels like he's often like too, either too late to close out or, you know, staying too far back or sometimes committing too early. But I have noticed that. It feels like sometimes the other four guys are on one page and Brooks on the other page, and they've got to get that ironed out by playoffs. Even if he's not going to close in certain matchups and maybe several matchups, they're still going to need him. I mean, as we've said many times, I still think it's true. He's too good to just not play at all. You have to figure out ways to play him. He's just got to, I think, be – and I'm not I'm not saying it's like a, they have to integrate him. I'm saying it's more – I think it's more he needs to integrate himself with the game plan – more often. I mean, unless I'm totally misreading it, but to me, it looks like he has just not been on the same page as the other four defenders, and that's giving up some of these open shots and, and things. Yeah, I think I think that's a fair way to look at it. I think it, it ultimately it's probably going to be a mix of both. It's the it's the yeah. roster and it's also Brooke. Uh, but just the, the the points in the paint is just it's on another level. Like the the Clippers in this game on Sunday just outscored were just outscoring the Bucks in the paint by a wide margin. And that's not something the Bucks are really used to considering they should have these 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 two staunch defenders, two staunch rim protectors in Giannis and Brooke and are just just a bigger team than most teams. I mean, you out, you have them out here going with that Giannis Bobby Gallo lineup multiple times per game. And Marcus Johnson by the way is just fed up with that lineup. I don't know if yeah. you caught that on the broadcast. But every time those that lineup was on the court, he's like, "By the way, guys, this is the worst lineup yeah. in NBA history." <laughs> like it's but, that, but he it's was happy. Like, he was happy they got a couple stops in this game. Yeah, but it was so funny yeah, he has to just hear him be like, "I love what? how he says the internet is saying this." Like Marcus, you're also kind of saying it. That's what he said in <laughs> he today's knows, game. He, he knows like, what the he's doing. has been pointing this out. I was like, "Oh, he know yeah. he knows what he's doing." Like the broadcast um, has pointed it out too. Yeah, yeah. but here, let's just talk about Gallo. Why? He made a three. <laughs> it, it was. <laughs> I, I feel like the funny thing about Gallo is some of the times it's like Gallo doesn't even do anything wrong, but I'm still irrationally upset that he's out there. Yeah, it's like, what what is he doing better than A.J. Green? Who, by the yeah. way, is just out of the rotation now. Yeah, which is very, very disappointing to me. Well, and the whole thing was like, okay, I, I guess the reasoning is you think you need size. But you're playing him with Bobby and Giannis. You don't need a big with Bobby and Giannis. And he's not doing big stuff. It's not like they have him guarding centers they stashed other teams stashed centers on him because he was 0 for 3 from deep until he made this first three as a buck and celebrated like he hit a freaking game winner uh in because like, he's now one for nine as a buck yes um but i i just don't understand like the reasoning of of why they play him over aj green i mean i know doc and vets and whatever but like aj green was playing over him in second halves he was playing over him at other times and has just not anymore and i i don't really see any reasoning I mean, AJ played 12, almost 13 minutes against the Warriors and did not shoot well. Which Maybe included a lot of simple. garbage time. It did. But he played, I think he was still getting second half minutes over, I can look. I think he, I thought he was still getting like second half minutes over Gallo, which had been like this weird trend. But now he's just not playing at all. Yeah, Gallo did not play in the third quarter. AJ Green played one minute in the third quarter against Golden State and then played a lot in the fourth quarter. I, I don't understand it. I thought AJ had earned his spot. At, I don't know if it's just that he missed those garbage time shots or what. But, and again, I think it sounds like Chris Middleton will be back soon, which we've been saying for three weeks. Who knows? Will yeah. he? <laughs> he practiced, knows he practiced hard we, again, we heard today. Yeah. It's fair. We'll, we'll talk about Chris in a little bit. But yeah. Is there, with with Gallo, will we? I just, will we? Was there more to say? Yeah, I mean, I guess the Chris Middleton update is one he he's not playing. We were hopeful that he would play against the Lakers. Uh, he did not. He also did not play against the Clippers. Yeah. Uh, let's see if he plays against the Kings. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, again, Doc he said he's been close again. for like he's been close for like three weeks now. So yeah, it's interesting. We 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 miss you, Chris. We 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 miss Chris so much. Ty and I are both <laughs> tweeting the same Wolverine meme, uh, and without. <laughs> <laughs> that the other I doing saw it. it. I saw it on my own Instagram page, and I was like, "Oh, sadly, this is applicable again." Let me tweet it, and then people were like, "You know, Rohan tweeted this year," and I was like, "Oh, I didn't know that, but I, his was better, so that's good." No, no, we're just we're just so in sync, Ty. We are. Um, 
But yeah, we we just miss Chris Middleton. A lot of these minutes, like this Gallo AJ discussion, shouldn't even be a thing because it should yeah. be Chris Middleton. Yeah. Like I, I love AJ. Uh, AJ's having a great season. Uh, he, it normally he probably shouldn't be in the rotation considering Pat's playing really well, and Chris Middleton should be there. You know, the Bucks third best player should yeah. be there. Uh, you know, it, but just a consistent guy, one of the best mid range. Come shooters. off the bench. I mean, should oh, we get a guy God, who's God. made? four jumpers in the last six years to start over him still? I'll tell you what, the boss man minutes are not. Yeah, we not, can do that. Uh, We're starting with negatives. He knocked down a three against the Clippers. Actually, three for five from the field, one of two from deep is the best boss man shooting game. I, I'm going to say in months. I'm going to look up the data to factually confirm that. I'm going to say that's the best boss man offensive game in months. It probably is, considering the fact that Jay Crowder, since he's been a starter in in wake of Chris Middleton's injury, has just been abysmal as a shooter. He's been he's been pretty good, pretty playable on the defensive end. I yeah, will say I he's, he's not like a complete he's, solid. He, he's not a negative out there on the court. Uh, he's a strong negative offensively. I was uh, wrong. Oh, when did he have a better shooting performance? Four for five, scored ten against Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte's February not an 27th. NBA team. That doesn't count. And then uh, in the Minnesota loss, he was very good. But so I, I was I was factually incorrect in weeks only. In weeks, which, which is still a strong sample. Yeah. <laughs> weeks is a long time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, considering this has been just a strange season for the Milwaukee Bucks where they've had different eras of a season. I feel like they've had four seasons in one season. The Bucks eras tour? Yeah, the Bucks eras tour is coming. Hey, we 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 I'm not going to say anything about a certain individual. Um <laughs> it's <laughs> either way I'm in trouble. Uh yeah. but it's just yeah, yeah, the the Jay Crowder minutes are not looking great for him as a starter. Again, like we'll say he's playing Playing pretty solid defense, just just the offense has been non-existent. And slotting in a guy like Chris Middleton should fix a lot of the offensive woes, considering that's what he's done when he's been healthy this season. When you see these last few weeks for Chris pre-injury, he was really starting to look better offensively and defensively. His shooting percentages were going way up. His, his just overall defensive stature and mobility was looking great. We'll see how he comes back after this latest injury. But... Yeah, I think I think Chris Middleton fixes a lot of the issues, not necessarily interior defensive issues, but yeah. fixes a lot of the issues plaguing this team in terms of offensive consistency, offensive flow, and just uh, being able to provide more space for Giannis and Dame because guys can just sag off of uh, off of lowercase Jay Crowder uh, nowadays. So you can just do whatever you need to do uh, when you have Jay out there, when you have Pat Bev out there too. It, it's he's not necessarily scaring you as a three point shooter. Uh, though he did make a three uh, in in the latest edition of the Belt to Ass Tour uh, against the Clippers, but it's just it, it's injection injection of more shooting into the Bucks starting lineup. So yeah, long story short, Chris Middleton should not be coming off the bench. Yes, that is correct. Which is obvious, yes. by the way. <laughs> uh, just like a made up thing to talk about, frankly. Uh, any other negatives? I mean, boss man shooting, we, we covered, I think. I, I agree with you. I think his defense still looked quite good, or um, Jay Crowder, quietly, I say, until he starts hitting some shots. And this is a good, this was a good sample um, for him, but any other glaring negatives? I thought Pat Bev was pretty bad against the Lakers and Warriors, but was pretty good against the Clippers and I mean, there's just going to be some variance, I think, in a player like he, that. He he got the cardio meme against the yeah. against the Lakers. He tweeted he just it too. Did you see him? I did. <laughs> He's like, I was getting got cardio tonight. Like Belt asked who it will continue on or something. You know what? We we can appreciate someone who's self aware. Yeah, he's he's certainly self aware. The belt was on the other ass for a couple games there, but now it's back to the correct ass. Yeah. Uh, the Clippers, uh, by the way, it's just it, it's it's so funny that we just have like just tracking a belt to ass tour about the Milwaukee Bucks and Pat Beverly under a Doc Rivers coach team. Do you ever just sit back and think about what what is happening? Sometimes I like remember the Adrian like Adrian Griffin and I'm just like, oh, yeah, what a time. 
Yeah, but now we have Pat Bev Gallo. Like, if you if you showed me a picture of Pat Bev Gallo and Doc Rivers, like just and all on the Milwaukee Bucks, like two years ago, I'd be like, when did they trade Giannis? Uh, <laughs> it's like, like what happened Dude, to end imagine, up? Imagine, imagine, and I'm I'm trying to anti jinx this, but if they had if they did have like a meaningful outcome to this season, we'll say, just like the story of this season, this would be like. One of the sloppiest deep playoff run teams ever. Absolutely. I mean, up Absolutely. there with... And guess what? I mean, that that needs to happen. With, you know, 16 Cavs, which was somewhat similar, but at least it wasn't wasn't the year they hired David Blatt. But still, anyway. I don't know just, if I have any other what a, overall negatives. I mean, just, just interior defense in general is tough, but we covered that. Yeah. Um, what do you think the answer no, is? No way. Besides, besides play better and communicate better. A, a team a team locking in on defense. We've we we see we saw when Pat Bev first got to the team, they just had a ferocity and uh on the defensive end that's sort of been lacking in, Until on this road like trip. The second half ish of the Clippers game, I would say. It's it's yeah I, I agree with that and like and the third it's, quarter of Warriors like it was here a little bit but not long enough yeah but it, it's starting to fade and they need to need to lock in on that uh, end to just take I, a general coach cliche <laughs> I have felt like this has just been a general thing with them they're definitely a team with like multiple gears and they just get careless about what gear they're in sometimes do you know how to drive stick no. Yeah, neither There's do Doc I. Rivers. That's the big question. You know what? Doc probably does. When For did sure, when did Doc autom- was. For when sure. did automatic transmission start becoming like a big thing? Doc was coaching basketball teams when you had to ride horses places. He's not going to be a fan of that comment if he hears it. I do think they the defense will just be inherently. I I, I don't know. I don't think it's all they can't. I think some of it is they aren't, which is frustrating. But I guess that's what happens when you have just like a, an old team. They're old. An old team in California for a week? Yeah. I, that's why I'm always torn on this Bucks team. I really am. Because like there's so many things where if you look at it two different ways, it could look entirely different. Like the two games before All-Star, when we were like, well, this sucks. Are they just like bad? Have they just lost it? And then Pat Bev is like, no, just we didn't care basically. And then they look great after that, and then they look crap again. And it's like, well, are they going to look good again? Like, why? I, it's it's more of a it's, it's a consistency. A, it's more they, of a ride than we've had in recent years. Yeah, at least when the Bucks were were under Bud, that you just knew you just knew what you were expecting game in and game out. It, yeah. it was formulaic, almost, and it was just like, oh, the Bucks are going to come out here and do this. They're going to do their thing. These players are going to have X many shots. That they're going to come in these locations, and we know exactly what's. It was a boring team. Uh, it was a fun team. They, they were just boring. I'll tell you yeah, what. These Bucks are not boring. No. Predictable. No. These Bucks are not predictable. No, <laughs> they are one. not. On any given night, you have no idea what's going to happen. No. Next game, Gallo might get in a fight with someone. Like, who knows? I think he should be. TA pre- might check in, get 10 I, minutes, and go I four think, for four from distance. I don't like, think anything can happen. happen. I, I don't think that will happen. <laughs> I think Gallo should be prematurely suspended because I do think there's a fighting aura around him. And I think Adam Silver should look out for the players on the other teams. <laughs> yeah. You think you should, they should look out for Sabonis because you know you might fight Sabonis. That's a good timing. So. Yeah, let's just let's just say like for March and then April and then May and then June just in case. Could you imagine? Yeah, just to see. Imagine and if long, Danilo Gallinari... He is suspended for March, April, May. The Bucks get to the finals, and he's the first guy off the bench after not playing for months. Imagine how crazy that would be. That's literally what Craig Council did last season for the Brewers. He literally did worse than that. <laughs> Listen to Cruiser for a bruising. Craig Council is an ass. Still upset? Yeah. Still upset? Jesse Winker took a swing, hurt himself. Said, try again. Try again the next day. What? Hey, that's my that's my guy, Jesse Winker. That's my guy. That was my guy. How, is he back? You need to, I, is he back? Is he walking again? I don't know. 
He is not back with like, the Brewers. Is, is he no. on a team? Uh, oh, dang. He might be on, I was hoping for a redemption tour. He might be on the Aberdeen Ironbirds, Rohan. Or the Lakeshore Chinooks. <laughs> is that an actual team? Yes, both of them. No, I know the Chinooks. But the, I, the Ironbirds. The, the Aberdeen. A, yeah. I think if they're in the Orioles system, I believe that's uh, Cal Ripken's team. Okay, sure. That's that's some deep cut baseball knowledge for me. Okay, I appreciate uh, yeah. that. I learned a, yeah, I learned some new. Go. Uh, what was I even talking about? I don't know. Um, let's let's go to positives. Actually, first let's talk about our friends at Prize Picks. Then we'll go to positives. Number one positive in positive. our lives. Yeah, I was gonna say right now is Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app with more than three million members. The easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. All you do is pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Turn $10 into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, college basketball entries today on prize picks. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, and turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Based on the way things are going right now, I would check out those Damian Lillard more than. So obviously, we know Giannis is always a, a pretty good idea or a pretty good candidate to do a more than on almost anything. But the way Damian Lillard's been playing and scoring lately, I would investigate those as well. And you can do so by downloading the app today and using code Eurostep for a first deposit match up to $100. That's right. Get up to $100 on us with your first deposit when you use promo code Eurostep when you download the Prize Picks app. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Prize Picks. It's been that easy for Dame lately too. Uh, he wasn't he wasn't outstanding Dame time the whole road trip, but I have felt like the level of play is just higher. And he was shut it down. We're going home Dame time against the Clippers. 11 for 19 from the field, 7 for 13 from 3, 35 points, 11 assists, 7 rebounds for Dame, and just two turnovers was outstanding in his 38 minutes played. And again, he not like he was terrible. I mean, against the Lakers, a wasted effort. The Bucks won his minutes actually by a lot. Had 28 points on 10 of 23 from the field and 12 assists, including a crazy late three that looked like it could have been the difference, but then D'Lo just wouldn't stop. And he was 5 of 10 from three and scored 20 points against the Warriors. Didn't get his full minutes in that game or probably would have scored close to 30, but again, it was a, a blowout, unfortunately. But Dame, I think, has looked a lot more aggressive, a lot more like the Dame we were hoping for, and that's probably the biggest development, I mean, from uh, that we could talk about. I mean, Dame time is a, a game changer. I think, what is it, if he scores 40, the Bucks haven't lost all season. When he is 50% from the field, they've lost like once or twice. I mean, he is right now. I don't, the believe, they've lost, I don't believe they've lost all season when Dame's shot 50% from the field. I thought they had one. I, I, will, I will reference. I will check. This. They've lost once when he scored 30, I believe. But it's it's just been yeah if if Dame's been playing well for the Bucks this season it's just been very good and leading to wins in general and yeah I think that is one of the biggest takeaways from this road trip is that Damian Lillard is starting to look better more comfortable within the Bucks. Wow, you're, you're uh, I think, correct. You're correct on the fifty percent thing. Perfect. So yeah, Damian Lillard shoots over fifty percent from the field. It's a it's Bucks victory as as of today twenty one and zero crazy yeah crazy that'll help that's that's half of the bucks wins <laughs> yeah it's it's just it's a good formula it's a winning formula who knows when dame shoots well at when your second best player is playing well the team wins games crazy concept but it's especially apparent when your second best player is also a top tier superstar and is starting to play like he's a top tier superstar again uh, he's getting a little more burst on his drives. And this is something we didn't mention is that he was questionable for one of these games with a rib injury. So uh, I think, I believe it was the Lakers game. He was questionable yeah. with a rib injury. Yep. Um, so who knows how that impacted him, but it's, it's just been good to see him uh, starting to play like himself, getting those shooting percentages up, getting a lot of uh, 
contested threes to fall as well, like some of his step backs as well, which is something like That's he he so was shooting fun. well on wide open jumpers uh, all season long, but he, he's struggling a bit on the contested jumpers. But being able to see that contested number come up as well is so satisfying. It's so good to watch, so fun to watch, and it reminds you of the player he is. And just being able to see Dame play at this level is is a big takeaway for the Bucks because this is when you want him to start playing at that level because the games are starting to matter really, really uh, more than ever. And it's getting close to that time, Ty. It's yeah, getting very we're, close to that we're, time. Were we six weeks away when we recorded to start last week? I mean, it's, the playoffs are five-ish weeks away now and not much more than five weeks. So, yeah, it is, it is go time. And it's been, honestly, I think really heartening to see Dame play this well. I mean, it was obviously, we've said many times, if he was going to be the guy he was like in January, they were kind of just DOA no matter what else happened. I mean, Chris comes back, the defense tightens up, cool. If your prize point guard is shooting 30% from the field, and it doesn't really matter. And uh, it's it's just been really nice to see. And I think there's still an extra level for him and Giannis to hit together. They have been definitely running more of the pick and rolls. I think that's been an emphasis from Doc Rivers, and we've seen it on the court. Giannis also continues to just play extremely well, even though he still looks limited from the Achilles tendonitis. He still looks like he's without a little burst. I would not mind if he got a game off soon. But still, that said, 34, 10, or 7 and 10 against the Clippers, 34, 14, and 12 against the Lakers, 23, 7 and 6 in fewer minutes. And I think that game he probably looked the most limited against the Warriors. Um, but the Damon Giannis connection continues to come along. And I think they're finding, I think they're finding more room for Dame to be aggressive, which is really important uh, lately in, in that connection. Yeah, for sure. They're letting Dame take a little more of the reins, which is good, uh, especially with Giannis being a little limited. I agree. He probably should uh, get another game off <laughs> here soon. We, Wouldn't we be surprised if it's against later. the Kings. So, okay, so if he plays the Kings game, then if he the next game is Sixers at home, we'll see if they have anyone. They have had no one for the last couple. They're spiraling. They're in seventh right now. If he took that game off, it would be he'd play Tuesday Kings. So what I'm thinking is this. If Chris plays against the Kings, I think Giannis will want to play that game with Chris. That is my thinking. If Chris doesn't play, maybe just take the Kings. But then it's like you're really putting yourself in a tough spot against the Kings. I don't know. I don't want to do a whole thing on that one game. But if he took the Sixers game off, he would play Tuesday night and then not until Sunday morning, which would be, what, like five days off. So that that's that would be pretty nice, too. We'll, we'll see what they do. We'll see if he takes any games off. He has not wanted to. And either way, um, he would get a couple days off at least between Sixers and, and that Suns game and then a couple more days off before the Celtics going to Boston uh, a week from Wednesday. But anyway, yeah, uh, hopefully – he continues to just feel better. I don't know. I feel like he's incrementally looked a little bit more springy game by game, but still does not look his normal self right now. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of like a he's he's not going up as strong. We saw this in yeah. the Clippers game where he's going up against Zubats. Uh, Zubats got him a few times, just being able to you know not uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, just not go up super strong. We saw Trace Jackson D- Davis against the yeah. uh, Warriors just. Uh, get him a few times and it's like oh that's not usually something that happens to Giannis <laughs> just gotta, having a player just talk to Al Horford about something yeah maybe <laughs> I'm still uh, laughing about what you said about Al Horford's piss I, I, I've been laughing about it for days if you didn't listen to the last pod with both of us you just like what the hell is Rohan talking about but it, it was very funny yeah it's it's not as weird as you just yeah, hearing it with yeah. that context well <laughs> Uh, way to set me up there, Ty. But <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I got to talk to Al Horford about something. Yeah, but yeah, it's just he he doesn't look like he has the same burst. But yeah, I think that's the the silver lining in that is that it's you've been able to see Dame take a little more of the reins, take a little more power, be able to be that guy who's just taking over for this team, being able to hit his jumpers, take his drives to the basket, which are starting to look a little more crisp. Still not getting any calls he wants, uh, which has just been a theme all season long. Finally but... got a three-point shot foul. You know what? I, I wonder yeah. if the secret sauce is... He had is to get his it... legs taken on. Do you me. have to go around a screen to get the shot? Even Did... even going even going around a screen, he doesn't get it a lot. I feel like the screen helps because it's more of a... 
implied shooting when you curl around a screen. He's just not going to get the pull-ups. I just try not to call that. I don't know why. It feels like they call him worse than anybody else. But they're trying to not do the, like, you're dribbling and then the contact happens and then you shoot. Like, that's what they're not giving him. And I still feel like there's other guys in the league who still get that sometimes. Dame never gets that. But I wonder if the screens will help. Uh, Another thought I had. So they did the same play twice late where Dame inbounds to Giannis and then comes around the screen to get the ball. I feel like if he cut more to the rim when they top lock that screen, it would be devastating. Yeah. Because those two defenders are like, they're going, they're crowding the screen and making the, the pocket pass difficult every time. Like every single time when they run that Giannis Dame DHO basically is what it turns into. I think Dame could find some joy cutting and even cut to the corner off that after faking to go around the screen. Just something I've been thinking, something that I filed away. Maybe you don't want to roll that out in the regular season too much, but I was like, they're yeah, playing it's a good so counter. they're playing so aggressive, like they're actually becoming very predictable on how they defend that action. Yeah, that's fair. That is a good counter to store away, and I'm sure Doc has that uh, in his in his back pocket, or one of the five thousand assistants for the Bucks has it in their back yeah, pocket. It's, it's so uh, fun seeing I them on the bench. Were, I they have so they many were assistants. Get rid of more. They got rid of one assistant. Yeah, that's it. And you feel bad. I forget who it was, but it's like DJ you feel bad Backer, for the one guy. Baker, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the w- one guy. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, they still, uh, yeah, they still almost, take up an entire row. You almost, you almost <laughs> should have gotten rid of at least two, so the one guy doesn't feel singled out, right? <laughs> he got singled out. He did, like, but it, it's almost like the office. Imagine like somebody else is like, "Wait, are you just trying to fire me?" So DJ doesn't feel bad, and they're like, "No, no, no." He, you know, it's something else you do as well. I don't know. Uh, I was happy to see the front dog make it through, though. Oh, always, always got to see the front dog make it through. Uh, he he's going nowhere. No, can never um, get rid of Prunty. His aura is unmatched. Speaking of unmatched aura, how about the way Pat Connaughton's playing? Not really a good transition. I, I don't th- I don't think he has. I was gonna aura. be like, what What are you talking about? <laughs> Pat unmatched, Connaughton has a terrible unmatched. aura. <laughs> Why? Hey, hey, come on! Just because he's, I mean, landlord. Anyway, you know, yeah, yeah. He has an unmatched getting hit in the face aura. Unmatched in a literal he definitely term. did. It's not a good or bad. It's just not matchable. I actually, actually. Not, I don't think anyone. <laughs> I, think, I think he, Pat Cotton literally does have an unmatched aura. How many former baseball player, basketball player, landlords who could hit in the face could there possibly be out there? I think that is by definition an unmatched aura. <laughs> He's playing very well. He's playing He's very one of well. one in that regard. He is one of uh, one. I you feel see like Bob, it Bob Myers critical. on the on the broadcast was like, he used to play football, right? It's like maybe there's <laughs> a reason they say it they say it on every broadcast. Cause I was like, maybe not every maybe everyone doesn't know that Pat used to play baseball. I think he got it did not have did not have audio. So they're putting Bob Myers on the games now, right? Not just on the yeah. halftime. Yeah, see, that's the issue. I think he's fine in the halftime, but having a yeah. – I think it's because it was the Warriors game. It was his first time back. I think he had done uh, it before too because I, I remember we, we talked about this. I've seen tweets about it. Let's yeah, not. Yeah, that's fair. That. But Let's not. Once, once he got that wrong, I was like, huh, maybe Pat Fax is a thing for a reason. But Pat Conson, Was Pat uh, an Aberdeen uh, Ironbird? Is that where I learned that from? There's no way that connection was just made. There's no way this circles back around to the Aberdeen Ironbirds. Hold on. You know his middle name is Bergen? Bergen? Bergen. Bergen. Patrick Bergen Connaughton. That man is... Connaughton made his professional baseball debut with the Aberdeen Iron No <laughs> Where he threw a 96-mile-an-hour fastball. He left in July 2014 to return to the Fighting Irish basketball team. No. And he kept his $428,000 signing bonus. He was always a businessman. Yeah, why would you give that back? It says in the wiki specifically the Orioles did not make an attempt to recoup it, which is honestly shocking considering how cheap that org is. But yeah, Pat, Aberdeen, yeah Iron, Aberdeen Ironbirds legend, Pat Connaughton. We have wow. talked but nothing Pat about his game. We've talked nothing Yeah, I was going to say, on, on the court, Pat Connaughton has been playing very well and has been a bright spot for the Bucks. Doc Rivers' has coach uh, talked about yeah, Doc Rivers has been coaching. Yeah, that's also true. Uh, Doc Rivers also has talked about noting. Pat Connaughton's 
<laughs> I, mean, I mean, you don't know what times. <laughs> uh, but uh, he's he's talked about how Pat's back. He's reemerged uh, back into he said, himself. He's, this he is said the guy he's the we guy... were scared of with the Sixers. <laughs> I was like, you guys were, you guys were sitting cowering in fear of Pat Connaughton, Joel Embiid, and like, James Harden in the locker room. Like, what are we gonna do about this guy? <laughs> and the last like two years as well. That's that's the time you're fo- not when he's a Clippers coach or anything. When he was the Sixers coach, you were worried about Pat Connaughton. That's what yeah, got me. Like, uh, that's so funny. Yeah, we, like we, he spent specifically with the Sixers, and I was like, huh, interesting. <laughs> Now I gotta look up how talk about Pat. I mean, he's I thought I think he's done everything well. Really, on ball defense has been hit or miss. He had a really nice block at the end of a shot clock and in the Clippers game. But I'm gonna pull up Pat's stats against the Sixers lately while you uh talk about everything else Pat Connaughton. But yeah, Pat Connaughton has been playing really, really well. I think a lot of it comes down to his shooting. Helps. I mean, 0 for two in that Golden State game, but but uh, yeah, four of five from three against the Lakers, and you get one, one of five from three against the Clippers, which is less than ideal. But just in general, since the All Star break, Pat Connaughton's shooting numbers have been trending upwards, and and you see, like, yeah, this is a guy who can be a versatile forward. He can be a guy off the bench who can sort of connect different lineups, be sort of a glue guy in different lineup combinations, and you see why Pat Connaughton has been a valuable member of this Milwaukee Bucks team for these last couple of years. What, what happened, Ty? Why are you laughing? Doc is just lying, dude. In <laughs> Likely thing for him to do. <laughs> in 21-22, in Pat played 42 minutes against the Sixers, 30.8% from the field, 20% from three. In last season, 22-23, he played 19 minutes across two games and did not make a field goal against the Sixers. <laughs> Joel That's why I was like, why like, specifically as do? the why specifically as the Sixers head coach did you oh, say that? Like maybe, you're just maybe, lying. Maybe they feared him so much, they just uh, they just game planned it for him so hard. It's like maybe the shooting numbers weren't that good because uh, they were just sending four guys at him at all yeah, times. It's we, like we just we it's forgot. like the batting numbers aren't going to look. The batting numbers aren't going to look good for Barry Bonds when he's being intentionally walked every at bat. You know. Yeah. Uh, that's that's so, how the Sixers treat Barry Pat Bonds Connaughton. and Pat Connaughton equal level professional athletes. Yes, in my opinion, I agree. Yeah, from Rohan. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, both players are not going to make the Baseball Hall of Fame. So who's to say? Wow, that's you know what? That's a very good point. Not really. You know, um, Pat's been passing pretty well too. I, it's funny because we laughed at the point guard Pat stuff, but I do feel like he's actually tapping into that more even though he's, he's not all right point as a ball handler yeah he's all right it's not something i want to see but it's he's he's all right he's averaging about two assists per game over these last three games and probably just lately um he's rebounding well he had some clutch rebounds late uh just playing a really strong all-around game and, and was closing i mean against the lakers and against the clippers obviously chris being out is a factor but as closing games right now, played more minutes than anyone outside of the core four against the Clippers, including Bobby Portis. Like, really a credit to him for pulling through. And again, a credit to, to Doc for sticking with some of these vets. We'll see. Now, at this point, this is how much I'm shook from the Pat and Bobby Assance. I'm like, what if Gallo's awesome by the playoffs? Could you imagine? Let's not get ahead of Could ourselves. Could you imagine? Doc sees the vision with Can, these vets. Gallo's just like random 10 and 5 game and a clutch game three. He has the Jeff Teague game. Maybe it's going to be the Gallo game this year. I can't. I, 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 hey, Gallo played for the Hawks, right? Or no, how about this? A guy who's purely on the team because he's played for the head coach before. Yeah. I, I don't That's know what Jeff Ga- Teague was. Has Gallo played for the Hawks? I don't know. I don't Welcome think back so. Actually, to Google things. Which he did two years. Wow. Oh, see, I knew that. <laughs> I don't think so. Actually, see, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> you made me doubt myself. <laughs> this is like the two Vandos all over again. You're just like gaslighting me about players. Dude, the two Vandos thing had me shook. Also, is Vando 19 feet tall? They showed him on the bench at a Lakers game. It looked like he was engulfing the rest of the bench. I was He's like, so how big. tall is this guy? <laughs> 
<laughs> he did look very big. It was not. It was not Twitter's number one Lakers bench takeaway from that game by any means. Uh, with LeBron, oh, no, it was a not great at all. Time with uh, Linda Rambis and Jeannie Bus, but oh, that's who that was. I knew Jeannie Bus, but that was yeah. Linda Rambis. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Gallo as a hawk was actually just want, quite good. He wanted to wish them a happy International Women's Day. By the way, it's happy so International Women's Day. Belated. Yeah, belated. Yeah. And Women's History Month. This is the first. Uh, uh, yeah. I didn't mention this on the last uh, podcast, but yeah, March is Women's History Month. Lisa Byington had a great stint on. Uh, was it NBA? Is it called NBA Today now? Yes. Right? It used to be the jump, but then they changed yep. it when they got rid of Rachel Nichols. NBA Today is a better name. Uh, Billy Kennedy is a better definitely. host. Uh, but I, I loved her segment on the Bucks. Uh, I, think, I think it was on uh, women, uh, International Women's Day. Uh, and it was just like pure facts, and ESPN needs more of that. So shout out to Lisa Byington. Yeah, shout out to Lisa as always. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, what were we talking about? I think we wrapped up talking about oh, the, Pat. The, the vets. Yeah, oh, we were just vets, talking about yeah. the vets in general. So we can we can go to Bobby now because we were talking about the Pat and Bobby Assance. But yeah, Bobby's been producing well. He's had strong scoring and rebounding games uh, off the bench. He's he's like kind of low key put himself back in the six man of the year race. Yeah, like, I don't know I if didn't, he was I, ever fully out of it because people don't watch the Bucks and didn't realize how dreadful things were. Despite and his numbers stayed okay. Yeah, what if he wins? Like, is there a strong? Is it just going to be a Celtic? I mean, Malik Monk. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Malik Monk is probably the uh, leader of the pack right now. That's a good call. Otherwise, but, like Horford's probably going to be up there just because everyone loves to loves to cheer for the Celtics. Yeah, everyone everyone does manage to love to do that. Which, by the way, just what a great stretch of basketball from Jason Tatum. Is that sarcastic? Yes. Ah, uh, nice. Even though this is a very like not, I wouldn't say a pro. I'd say a pro Jason Tatum podcast. Like we, for we, we, we for don't... Bucks people, it's an extremely pro Jason Tatum podcast. Yeah, we have nothing against Jason Tatum. He's a likable guy. He's a Celtic. That's what we have against him. Yes, for sure. But I think I think Bobby has sort of been solidifying himself in that race because of good play. I mean, defensively, it's been a little bit of an issue as of late. But in terms of his offensive game, just being able to put his back to the basket and get to the rim, um, hit those little middies, hit those little push shots, he's been actually using his frame to his advantage as he's been doing ever since the All-Star break, which is just great to see and such a better it, it leads to better cohesion for the overall offense as we've seen, which leads to better results for Bobby and the team. How do you feel about the traps? It seems like they executed them a lot better against the Clippers. They were horrible against the Lakers and Warriors. Well, yeah, because like because Bobby was just not. He was just jogging back. He was jogging yeah. back on when when yeah. trying to recover, which is just it's just you, just can't, you, do you it. can't do that. Yeah, you can't do that. You have to actually be intentional and and move with purpose and move with effort <laughs> if yeah. you actually want to be able to execute that uh, trap and recover defense. But it's. It, it looks good at times. It looks bad at times. And I think that purely has to do with Bobby's effort on the defensive end. I will say his scram switches were great against the Clippers. Like they were able to trap, not give anything up. He would scram out Pat C or Dame or whoever. He's been consistently good at that. Um, but some of the traps just need to be crisper. But yeah, his offensive game has been better. He went on a cold spell against the Clippers, but kind of stabbed himself out of it with some middies. Rebounds well and has has been again a very important buck, which is which is great to see. Hopefully, you know can continue some. You know he's not going to be as red hot as he has been the whole rest of the season, of course. But hopefully, he can be ready to take that play into the playoffs. The other vet we're talking about, who I actually almost feel bad about not talking about sooner, because I think he's had a tremendous couple of games, is Malik Beasley. Uh, the last couple, the threes are falling again. He was four for nine against the Clippers and four for nine against the Lakers after an over against the Warriors. And that one, they really needed him to knock some down, I think, to try and win that game. Again, I don't know if it would have mattered the way Golden State played early and late, but uh, it's nice to see him be an effective shooter again. Obviously, the Bucks need him to do that. And I feel like we're seeing him play the best defense he's played as a Buck and probably ever in his career. I mean, I think... 
his defense these last couple games, like the flip side of, you know, okay, the Lakers were able to get Dame and Brooke P&R defense on D'Lo and get a good shot. The flip side was they start the play by like, okay, we need to get Malik Beasley off of D'Angelo Russell. Like, that is kind of noteworthy that they even cared enough to set up the first part of that because he has played at that level. He's had some steals and fast breaks. Like, he's been able to, you know, force some out-of-bounds and and, um, shot clock violations and those things. Like, it's been a really, I think, impressive run for for Bees. He's bought in, and, man, if if he goes and takes the bag, I won't begrudge him. You've earned it, man, honestly. I mean, we'll see playoffs are going to be determinant there too, but – uh, just an awesome season from Malik Beasley, and nice to see the shots fall again. Yeah, for sure. I think he's going to look even better out there when Chris Middleton comes back as well, uh, just in terms of being able to get more open shots, being able to uh, just catch and shoot in rhythm rather than having to be an intentional, like come off screens, three-point shooter type guy, movement threes. He's so much better as a catch and shoot guy. Um, he's been moving the ball well, attacking some closeouts and kicking out as well. It's been uh, it's been it's been a good stretch for Malik Beasley, who's had uh, was uh, teetering uh, pre All Star break, but then now has firmly found himself again. The steal from Harden and Dunk to start the second half, I believe, was awesome against the Clippers. He was two for two from two in that game, which you don't always see from Bees. But yeah, it's been a, a really nice stretch. I think the last guy we haven't really talked about is Patrick Beverly, again uh, with guys who's been playing. I think at this point, let's get this out of the way. I think we'd both like to see AJ over Gallo. I don't want to speak for you. Sometimes I still see like, oh, Ajax needs to get some burn, this and that. I just don't really think so, frankly. I it's mean, done. He had, a, it's he had done. a nice rookie season. Marjan had a nice sophomore season. I don't think there's really anyone, again, move Gallo aside, who it's like, oh, yeah, that person shouldn't be playing so Ajax can play or even so Barjan can play. It's not that I'm low on those two players, but I think right now – these vets are helping you win more. Like they've found it. They've got it together. And again, when Chris comes back, there's going to be even fewer minutes, but Gallo aside, I I don't think that there's being mistakes made every night with like Ajax not playing necessarily. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's something we haven't touched on in a while. So I'm glad you brought it up. It's, it's not really, there's no room in the rotation for them when, especially all these guys are playing really well, like, even the guys who are talking about her not playing super well, like Brooke Lopez or something, what what is Ajax or Marjan going to do in that situation? You know, yeah. um, they're it's there's too many guys ahead of them, I also and for good think reason. People need to remember that athleticism does not equal defense exactly. I mean, there were plenty of moments in late in the Griffin tenure where, like Ajax, was getting beat too. Like he was not, I would say, a defensive stopper with the Bucks. I would not say no, Marjan he was, was he either. Was, they were they were getting like Ajax specifically, even in the spot minutes he got in the beginning of the Doc Rivers tenure, wasn't great. Did not look yeah. great in those minutes. And there, there's there's a, re- I mean, a rookie who was picked 36 overall. Like there should not be an expectation that he's a seventh man on a, a championship contender at least, or a team that wants to be or thinks it is. It should be. Exactly. Like this is not usually what happens, and especially when you have a team loaded with vets who are actually playing well, it's fine. It's it's yeah. okay for this to happen. This is usually how it goes. I think again, as we talked about with some of these vets on expiring deals, next season is going to be a time when a lot of these players can compete for real for real minutes. But Pat Bev, I mean, I, I touched on briefly earlier. I thought played very well again against the Clippers, which was nice to see. Did not have great games against the Lakers or Warriors. I mean, he is the backup point guard behind Dame. It's going to be hit or miss with a player you acquire midway through the season. Um, got that cardio against LA, of course. I don't know. Is much more on Bev. I, I still think he's valuable and adds something, but I think he'd probably maybe maybe got us and maybe him as well a little too high on uh, what he can bring to the Bucks, at least on court, outside of the mentality and stuff. Yeah, for sure. I think sometimes it can be a little frenetic out there. He had a few good, uh, like he had good minutes in this Clippers game, but sometimes he might be out there doing a little too much. Doc uh, was going crazy on him at one point during the Lakers game. I was yeah, told like fair. he was pulled after something. Sometimes offensively, I'm like, do you know your 35 year old Patrick Beverly? 
Like, there was definitely one where he looked off Dame, and he had talked about, I think, on his pod, like, hey, make sure you just pass to Dame. That's, like, kind of your whole role. And, like, tried to run an action. It didn't go well. I think that's what it was. Um, he freelances a little bit sometimes on defense, too. But it's like, okay, Pat Bev, I think, has that's learned the right specialty. to freelance. Yeah, if you want to freelance defensively a little bit, that's fine. Offensively, let's not run sets and let just let let's Dame not, stand. Let's not, let's not get carried away here. Yeah, <laughs> like, shoot This team has already struggled to... This team has already struggled to get Dame in good position. We don't need Pat yeah. Bev going out here doing these things. Yeah. Like, Pat don't, Bev, don't, don't make Giannis – don't, don't call Giannis and make him tell you you're, you're a role player. Because I mean, he'll do it. We know he'll do it. Just be careful. <laughs> he'll Pat do it Bev. live on video. He doesn't care yeah. if anyone sees it. He'll do on it. On your own show, literally. So don't call him on the pod because he, he doesn't care. He has no concern. <laughs> <laughs> you see that uh you see that Serge Ibaka tweet where it's like what was what did he tweet? I'm gonna have to find it. Quick. Oh no, I didn't. I I'll tell you what, I don't follow him. Here, do you talk about something, I'll find this. Um I don't know if I have anything else to say. The Bucks upcoming. Uh, oh yeah, oh, so 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 today. Serge I found it, I found it. Okay. Serge tweeted God. don't he, he he tweeted, "Don't decrease the goal, increase the effort." And then someone quote tweeted, "It's like, but everything sucks, Sir Jabaka. How am I supposed to?" <laughs> and I don't know. What is Probably his goal? Didn't need to happen like on this U- podcast. A YouTube plaque. What? Is his goal right now a YouTube plaque or? No, he plays somewhere. Oh yeah, isn't he? He's a he plays for. League, I think. He plays for Bayern Munich. That's Basketball pretty good. Team. Shout out. Okay, good job, Serge. That's good. I don't know if it's that good. Bayern? Oh, is that, is yeah, that it's Bundesliga? A... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not that. Okay. Never mind. That's not bad. That's not that great. That's not a top great. It'd be more impressive if playing for their soccer world. team. That's a top seven basketball league in the world right there. I think. That is. Yeah. I'd say so. It has to be. Right? I mean. NBA. NBA. Euro League. Or is your league not a league? What are you saying? Canada? I don't know if Canada's better. No, uh, Chinese. Oh, I, may, that's a point. Maybe a, uh, Australia, I would say, probably is. Oh, yeah, NBL, yeah. G? No, nah, yeah, G. Yeah, it counts. I think G, G is probably better than. Uh, I'd like to see some good. That's what they should do. Instead of. I don't like when they have the NBA games, teams play against like Bayern or whatever. It's like, okay, even if you win, like it's. It's more interesting, like make the herd. They stopped play doing Bayern. it because uh, because teams were yeah. losing. Yeah, yeah, it's very funny. which was really funny. <laughs> but yeah, have uh, yeah have the herd play have the herd play Bayern or something. That'd be really funny. They should do like a Champions League for the non NBA leagues. They should. They really. Should. I think the rest of those players would probably appreciate it more, like the opportunity, like fly if the herd win the title. Bring the herd to Europe. Bring the NBL team to Europe, and just have them play a playoff bracket. That'd be really fun. You might have just cooked idea. here. Yeah, I think I did. Honestly, that's a free idea. I think you like, did imagine, just cook. Like the Canada League, C E B L S. I think it is. Yeah. Like just like suddenly wins, and everyone's like, "Whoa! Didn't see that coming!" Like that'd be fun. That would be. Yeah, fun. everyone. You know, that, everyone's like, "Oh, the." I NBA, mean, Real Madrid no. would probably. Real Madrid would probably crush everyone, but probably. But in best of one, like. Yeah, that's I fair. Think, you I don't know. Happen. Or maybe it's like round you, robin you, or whatever it is. However they would do it. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Real Madrid's really good. <laughs> yeah. They probably would just. They're really good. Gershon kills it for them. My guy. My guy, Yabu. Just here in a stadium, John and Yabu Sela is the top five life experience for me. <laughs> <laughs> but Who else yeah, is on that team we... right now? What? Who else is on that basketball team right now? Um... Real Madrid, Baloncesto. They use cookies. Oh, Sergio Lul is there. Oh, yeah, uh, all the all the legends are there. Is that Faku? Is that how you say it? Campazo? Yeah. He's on that team now. Yeah, so is Sergio Rodriguez. They're stacked. Hizonia, Gabriel Deck, Rudy Fernandez, Mario Hizonia, Vincent Poirier, Vincent Poirier. Poirier. Edie Tavares. Yeah, they're loaded. No, it's it's they're they're so good. Even though they just beat Tenerife by only two points today. Close one. 
Have you ever been to Tenerife? That's somewhere I really want to go. No, no. Never been to Europe. I want to go to Tenerife. Why go to Tenerife when you could go to Eau Claire? We should get a Wisconsin Board of Tourism <laughs> sponsorship because I could do that all day. <laughs> London? I've got Appleton right here. Why go to Tenerife when you can go to Eau Claire? It's an insane <laughs> sentence to say out loud. 5% of our here. listeners are going to turn it off and discuss. I think 60% are going to be like, Eau Claire's not so bad. And it's not. It's a, it's a, fine, it's a fine town. Uh, the Bucks have come schedule. <laughs> I broke Rohan with that one. Why go to Tenerife? When you can go to Eau Claire. <laughs> I gotta tweet that as soon as we're done recording. Dude, go ahead. People will tune in for that. Um, the Bucks' upcoming schedule. They finish the road game Tuesday night. The last, thank God, pre-playoffs. Last 9 p.m. Least. start. Pre-playoffs, late late start. I think they're late. They won't even have that during playoffs. I mean, the, the, we'll see what the first round matchup is. They might put them on at 4 a.m. If, they, if they're not moved by it. That's fair, but it's like it, let's say they play a West Coast team in the finals. It's the finals. It's not going to start. No, not in the finals. No, it would be like early. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. First round because they're going to play an East team. It shouldn't be that bad. Um, they don't even start at eight the rest of the way after that game. Uh, it's all six or seven or a noon game against the Suns. So one more Bucks fans. One more nine p.m. cup of coffee necessary, uh, or some people just raw dog it, which is fine too. Bucks Kings. Uh, then the Sixers are in town on Thursday, Pi Day, at 7 p.m. And then the Suns are in town at noon on Sunday before a couple days off. And then the Bucks head to Boston. I have to keep looking away from Rohan for the audio listeners because first he gave me a classic Rohan look with the big eyes. And now he is cracking up. Uh, but I'm not going to lose my composure uh, uh, Celtics Nets back to back but that is not until the next week so only only three games in the next seven or actually like eight or nine days here for Milwaukee you're muted I am yep. muted that is you're that is something cracking I up it's, yeah I I didn't need to mute myself for that but yeah, it's it's just uh, it, it'll be an interesting end of the schedule here for the Bucks. I mean like you're mentioning just an interesting uh, way to go out here, but there's there's still time for them to get right. I mean, even though this was what a two game straight, how worried are you about this team in terms That's of record? That's a good way to end it. Oh wait, 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 wait! In terms of record or in terms of how they look? We'll say record because we're not going to really just care. Do- I don't really care. They're not going to drop past three. I don't yeah. think. I, I mean, realistically, I was going to pull the standings up too, so that's a good shout. I mean, they're tied in record with the Cavs. The Cavs have played fewer games, so I think they're technically ahead on winning percentage, but they're both eight games back of Boston and four games between either one of them and the Knicks, who are just so beat up that I, I just can't imagine they would go on a run in time to make up that four-game difference. Um, so I, I, the record, I, I don't find myself... I would like two more than three, but... I mean, if if you can't beat the Cavs on the road once or twice, are you going to win a title anyway? Probably not, I think. We've seen the Bucks go on the road against, frankly, better teams than that and win. So, no. I think three is ideal, as I've said, but I am not uh, too concerned with the actual record or where they will end up in the standings. Are you? No, I don't think so. I just wanted to see what your gauge was. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think I'm locked up with you. It doesn't really... It doesn't really matter at this point. Like two, three. As long as you're two or three, you're fine. Yeah, you're not going to get ahead. one. Uh, wow, you can fit almost the whole remaining schedule on one view right now on Google. I mean, there's a lot of wow. there, there's a lot of very winnable games here. Will the Bucks win them is a different question. But uh, with no West Coast trips, you had a long home stand before right before the end. I, I think they'll be fine record wise. I think so too. I think so too. Do we have anything else we need to touch on here, Ty? I don't think so. I think we covered I, it all. I think we have indeed. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll say thank you for listening to this episode. Uh, this this weird episode <laughs> of the Hero Step here on Blue Wire GSPN, presented by Prize Picks, our good friends over at Prize Picks. Um, 
Make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening to this pod, podcast platform of choice, or YouTube. Make sure you check out gspn.info for all of our links, including all of our other podcasts, Talk of the Tundra, Win It Safe, Cruising for a Bruise, and all that fun stuff. Make time for this. The Oscars are tonight uh, as we're recording on Sunday. So uh, make sure you uh, are subscribed to make time for this because there will be a post-Oscars episode on that. And I can't wait to can't wait to see. What's, a, what's your biggest Oscars upset prediction time? Dude, I'm trying to see if I've seen it. Oh, Oppenheim. Oh, Bar- Barbie was this year. What's my biggest upset pick? Yeah. You're asking me way too. I don't know nearly enough to do an upset pick. That's fair. Neither do let I. Me, let me try. Hold on. I'll find one for you. I've, I've seen one of these movies. Which which one? Barbie. Yeah, same. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say the upset. Oh, no, that's not. Yeah, I don't have an upset pick for you. I'm sorry. I don't. Want, I would just be making it up. I don't know anything about. How about how about uh, Oscar nominations? I'm gonna pick one real quick for you. I think I have it. I just need to make sure I'm not gonna. Make I'm gonna fun say. Of oh, Jeffrey Wright, best actor. International feature film. I'm going Io Capitano. That could be the. Is favorite. there a? Is, no idea. I have no idea. Is there a Bollywood movie? Uh, no. Italy, Japan, Spain, Germany, UK. Tough. Zone of interest, I think, might be the... Uh, Is that the fave? Favorite there. I'm no one. Uh, uh, Capitano. Uh, Godzilla minus one? For uh, international feature film? Interesting. I might just Godzilla be... Mi- Are you looking at odds? No. I'm looking at international feature film uh, what, Is the movie called Godzilla minus one? Yeah, have you, have you oh. lived under a rock? <laughs> yes, I have. I have, actually. There's basketball on every day. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I, thought you were of... like, I thought they were minus one. I was like, wait. <laughs> so, was hot. It's like, wow. Rohan's cooking up a little Oscars parlay. He's seen one of the movies. <laughs> I, know I said Godzilla minus one was not even nominated. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. I feel like before we embarrass ourselves further, I'll, I'll yeah, finish. Yeah, that's a good. So, that's a good time. Yeah. To... Pod random. We'll talk to you next time.